This is intense. Hey guys, Whitney Whitaker, uh, head dog trainer at Milligan Valley Canine Academy. Of course, you know my assistant, Danielle Onder, and she's gonna be reading my questions for me today. Things are gonna be a little bit different today because we are on uh, Instagram Live and we are on uh, Facebook Live. So we might have some additional questions coming in on those platforms, um, but we already have some uh, questions that we have already had <clears throat> sent to us. Um, I don't know. You need some help? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm on Facebook. What do I pay you for if you don't know what you're doing? I don't know how to work Facebook, I'm sorry. There you go. There you go. There we go. There. There we are. Nothing more intense than having three screens. Right? And then, and then and I then, feel like sometimes like we have then, to look. Yeah. Hey, look, people joined. Yeah. Listen, and then we got to look over here too, and then it'll, it'll be, be one day we'll learn how to just record it on one thing. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fine. So anyway, guys, we're balanced dog trainers, and what that means is we believe in both yes and no. It means we believe in disciplining and correcting the dog for things that we... Somebody said they can't hear us. Oh. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Miranda, on. can you hear us, Miranda? Yeah, turn turn it up. Turn it up? <laughs> no, like turn, turn it up. Like turn it up here. Why would that make any difference? I don't know. It's the microphone. I don't know. No. Maybe because the microphone's at the bottom there. Oh. All right. Good. Somebody else can hear us. Okay. So I All right. We're good. Okay. okay. So um, anyway, balanced dog trainers. Uh, that means we believe in disciplining and correcting the things that we don't want to see, and it means we believe in praising and rewarding the things that we do want to see, okay? So it's just a balance of everything. It's just a balance of everything. So um, we have some questions that folks have sent us already this week, so we'll answer those. And then, of course, if you guys have any other questions, uh, let us know, and we'll answer them on the fly. Historically, with the Q&A, folks ask us a lot of punishment-based questions because what people are struggling the most with is how do I stop an unwanted behavior? Like, that's what people are struggling with. So you're going to hear us talk a lot about discipline and punishment, but that's because that's the only way to stop an unwanted behavior, okay? Uh, if we want to increase a behavior, we reward it, okay? All right. It was hooked up to... Her car. Okay. That's that's awesome. All right, Maddie, you threw it. Like we, you listen. You scared us. You should have seen us setting up this entire thing, okay? Because I am like not tech savvy at all. No. And Danielle usually is like okay, but like you threw us for a loop. I'm like, well, I can't hear. Let's shut the whole thing down. So, okay. All um, right. Sarah Miller says, "Hey, hey, Sarah." And um, that's on Facebook. Oh, hey, and Sarah. Brittany says, "Hey, girls." Oh, Brittany. Brittany Irwin? Yep. Oh, she, we saw her at Grinders the other day. That's... Oh, okay. Yeah, Hi. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Um, so, we we have our first question from the live audience from Dave Onder. From Dave Onder. Where do I know I that name know from that, I don't know who that is. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on avoiding dog bites? We have one almost every day in the ER lately. Okay. So, David. David is Danny's husband and he's been telling us he's like you guys need to address dog bites he's like it, it is a real problem uh because he's an ER nurse so about two to three times a week he gets uh people that come into the ER with injuries sustained by their own dogs um so what was his question again any, uh, avoiding dog bites mm -hmm. well any thoughts on avoiding dog bites yeah yeah I got a hundred of them but it's the the problem is is um dogs are being put into situations that they they can't handle because they're kind of just like life's a free for all for them you know life's a free for all for them so lots of structure would help that but we we live in a world now where you know dogs are just doing what they want and then we get the backlash from it how do you feel about kids interacting with dogs like, I think sometimes that's what he's seen, too. Recently, we've seen a couple kids being bit by dogs. What would you give advice on that? Yeah, I mean, I think kids, I think kids need to be uh, able to exist with dogs. Uh, I don't think that it's always great for kids. And I, when I say kids, I'm talking like 
10 and, and younger, I don't think it's great for kids to um, interact with dogs unsupervised by an adult. I yeah. think that's where we see a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. um, kids need to be managed and so do dogs. And when, when um, adults are not present, that's usually when these bites and things are happening with children. So we are really big advocates of, of dogs and kids existing together. Yeah. All right. Uh, Neil says hello. Hey, Neil. Okay, and then we had an, another question. Okay. Any suggestions? Yours truly unpredictable wants to know, what do I do if my trainer is avoiding my calls and ignoring my texts? Get a new trainer. Get a new trainer. We're not sure why. Yeah. I don't know why. But I know that if I was working with a trainer that was avoiding my... Uh, questions and needs as a client i would i would find a new trainer yeah yeah okay right. we... so i think we're good on that all right oh any signs to look out for in your own dog or in other dogs like if we see this then stay away or keep your dog away from others yeah <clears throat> i mean dogs tell us when they're uncomfortable about certain situations they tell us in their body language but we have to listen we have to listen as the um as their owners so um if if you have a dog that doesn't like people really then quit letting people pet your dog you know true yeah so um i think sometimes though it, in right right now in society though it's that's almost frowned upon because it's like oh well everybody should be able to yeah. love my dog and right you're looked upon as if you say oh no don't pet my dog then you're yeah absolutely so you you have to advocate for your dog. So if your dog doesn't like people, you have to tell people, sorry, my dog's not really a people dog. So yeah. All right. Um <laughs> that's that's Eric. Like when a moose is in the house. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Wyatt. Yeah. Yes, we Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wyatt's a good boy. Okay. Uh yours truly unpredictable says mm. she says she trained my dog, but there's no improvement. He's still aggressive. That's tough. Hey, maybe we could do a Skype session with you. Yeah. We could maybe do that. Yeah. Maybe we could help you and give you some something to... Yeah, we can. That's tough. That's tough. I always tell people, before you pick a dog trainer, you do your research. So why do we put out so much free information? Number one, we love helping people. Plain and simple. Yeah. So why do we do these Q&As like right now on a Friday night? Because we want to help you. Also... Anybody that's thinking about hiring us has no doubt about what they're getting. So we're totally transparent in what we offer as far as our training services. So uh, make sure that when you guys are looking for dog trainers, that you're doing your research. So make sure that you're going to get your money's worth. So I'm really sorry that's happened to you. All right. All right. You want to go with our first question yeah, that we had on let's do it. from Wednesday? Yep. Tracy... Bueller. Bueller. I was going to say it. Leave me alone. Let me read my name. <laughs> okay. Miranda will back me up on this. I know she will. Okay. She's texting you the whole time, huh? That's, <laughs> yes. That's, yeah. so. <laughs> she is. Okay. Um, not really a training question. Ollie has taken on a new behavior at bedtime. He always tries to sneak a cat toy out of the hallway on the onto the bed. Sometimes I miss it or let him through the bedroom doorway with it. He gets in his bed, but several times as I'm on my way to shower and leave the room, he brings me the item he has brought in. He stands in front of me until I bend down and ask him what he has for me. Mm -hmm. He then gently gives me the toy or places at my feet. Curious as to what this behavior represents, as he's never used to do that. So, the dog is bringing... A cat toy to a her. A cat toy. Yeah, and okay. he's like trying to sneak it. Okay. Uh, so you could put the dog into avoidance over the cat toy. There's nothing, I mean, you could do that. Um, or teach your dog the out command. So what you can do is dog picks up a toy or an item that they're not supposed to have and they should be able to drop it. So if my dog picked up anything off the floor, I could say out and they would just spit the item out. So that's what you need to do. You need to teach the dog the out command 
and um you could do that uh the like how we do it is on a remote collar we take the dog's working level on the mini educator and the remote collar and like dog has a ball in their mouth or something and we say out and we hold the continuous button as we slowly dial up on the dog's working level so we dial up slowly because i don't want the dog to be corrected for playing with their tennis ball or something but i just want them to understand when i say out i mean drop the item so you're going to slowly dial up on the remote call and the dog will spit the item out and then so you just do that over and over and do that with the remote caller um, if you wanted to just straight out discipline or correct the dog for picking up the cat toys and you don't ever want the dog to pick up the cat toys again, you could say no and bonk the dog or you could say no and give him a pop on the prong collar and just correct him for picking up the, the cat toys. So good question and next. If you don't know what that behavior represents, I'm not sure that it represents presents really anything no no it's i think not it's just, anything no that, like no okay. it's just being a, this is a dog being a dog okay well she just that was her actual yeah. question so i wanted to yeah yeah it doesn't really represent anything he's just he's okay. being a dog okay so diane Cur currents yep i wanted to ask you about tips for keeping my year old gsd from stealing snacks and toys from her two-year-old um, when she takes a toy, I tell her no and give her one of her own toys. When she steals food out of her hand, I tell her no and put her in her kennel for a timeout until the baby is finished eating. Mm -hmm. um, she feels it's totally worth getting in trouble over. Oh, yeah. Of goldfish crackers. Yeah. Okay. So, number one is you can't... Redirecting is rewarding. Oh, I was going to say it is rewarding. <laughs> I was going to say it. Well, you didn't say it quick enough. I'm sorry. Redir redirecting is rewarding. So guys, the purely positive community is telling you when a dog is, is doing something they shouldn't, redirect it. Guys, that's just ignoring the behavior and you're actually rewarding it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So dog takes a toy off the baby and, 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 Diane, I'm not picking on you. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm just, we're just clarifying for everybody. Dog takes a toy off the baby. You take the toy off the dog and then you turn around and you give the dog another toy. You just rewarded it. That's well, all you did. And then you're patterning something yes. too because then the dog's like, okay, so if I yes. take this toy, I'm going to get my other toy. Yeah. Mom likes it when yeah. I do that. So You have to correct it. Also, there needs to be firm boundaries between the dog and the child. Yeah. Has to be. Has to be firm boundaries. So teach your dog the place command. Teach your dog a good downstay. Okay. Um, and yes, okay, let's say your kid it was eating something and it was safe for the dog and they're in their hype chair, and then you're like, okay, go ahead and you let them like eat up some crackers. Like, I don't see anything wrong with that. But I do see a lot wrong with the dog going up and taking toys off off of um off of the child. So that would be a no and a correction. Are you texting people during our Q&A? It's Miranda. You can tell her. <laughs> well, I can't. I can't. Listen, I can't control you and her. So, <laughs> and do this. So. Is that why you keep us apart? Because you can't control us together? <laughs> yeah, I so guess. So you just like don't like us together? I guess. Yeah. Uh, are you checking Facebook? You got anything going on there? Yeah, I've been okay. checking it. Okay. I'm not right. seeing anything unless. I okay. think this is working. So okay. I'm not seeing anything. All right. Next. Um, Rhonda Snyder. Hey, Rhonda. Could you please tell me what is an okay amount of time that a house-trained six-month-old GS can be left in her cage? Our working hours will be changing, and we are feeling bad about her being in her kennel during the day. Six months old? Mm-hmm. Eh, I mean, I mean, you might have people that disagree with me, but the dog should be fine for a good eight hours. Dog should be fine. It, Here's the thing. Okay, so you work eight hours a day. Does that mean you shouldn't own a dog? No. People will say that. People will be like, well, why do you own a dog if the dog's going to be crated for eight hours a day? What else are you going to do? You know? So, yeah, a good eight hours is fine. Anything more than that, I would see if somebody could swing over and let the dog out to potty. So, okay, next. Um, you got a live there. I know I do, but I'm. We gotta finish this. You um, do. <laughs> I'm just asking. Yes, 
just because Kathy Marie also commented on that, so I want to acknowledge oh, that okay. she commented on the same thing. Okay. She said, same here, I always feel so guilty if I think our Bernese puppy has been crated too long, but at the same time, he needs structure. We yeah. cannot trust him yet on his own. He will chew drywall or back of the couch. So, oh. yeah, but we we always recommend structure and being crated. Yeah, guys, crating your dog is the kindest thing you can do for your dog. Yeah. I'm going to tell you how extreme I feel that not crating your dog is. That, to me, is like not putting a three-year-old in a car seat. I'm just going to drive with him on my lap. Like, that's how extreme it is to me. Crate your dog. It's the kindest thing you can do for your dog. Crate them. And don't feel bad about that at all. We're huge advocates of exercise. Absolutely. But crating them is the kindest thing you can do for them. So don't feel bad about that at all. I agree. I agree, obviously. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I hope. She's like, I if hope. you don't, you're fired. I hope. Okay. All right. To our Facebook questions, Sarah right. Willis Hall, can you explain how to use a clicker for training? Yeah, so Sarah, a clicker is just a marker. That's all it is. She's oh, alive. Hey, okay. <laughs> so Sarah, a clicker is just a marker. So we use a clicker when we want to mark uh, all the behaviors that we want to see. So why use a clicker? Because it's more exact. So uh, in my training company, there's three of us that train board and train dogs. Um, so we want things to be as uniform as possible. So dog sits, as soon as his dog's butt hits the ground, click food. Dog downs, as soon as the dog downs, click food. Dog comes, click food. Um, we don't use it on heel. Dog gets on place, click food. So you click for um, the exact moment that the dog complies. All it is is a marker. None of our board and train dogs though go home on clicker and food. So we wean them off of that onto variable rewards, which, which looks a lot like uh, physical praise. And then if the dog does something really awesome, then we'll give them a food reward. But none of our board and trained dogs go home with a clicker. Uh, uh, with a clicker. So it's just a marker. That's it is else. just a, it, but but like you said before, like a lot of times, because we do family pet dogs and people, mm -hmm. so like a lot of times we don't, we're, it's not in private training. A lot of times we're like, oh, you don't have to use the clicker, but it, yeah. it is it is a valuable tool, right? But saying good can also be just as as yeah work as just as well. So when we have clients on private training, she's absolutely right. We don't actually teach the clicker on private training because timing is really important on your clicker, and I don't like to overwhelm my private training clients. Um, and I sometimes feel like adding the clicker in sometimes for clients can be overwhelming. So we just use the, the marker word good. So when the dog does something that uh, we can reward them for, we just say good and then food. Okay. Um, so going back to what we talked about before, it's Whitney. She said, so once the dog is potty trained and house trained, you wouldn't recommend keeping the dog out. Oh, no. That kind of went back yeah. to the crate training yeah. thing. No, so, so crate training is life. So I'm at Danielle's right now and um, um, my dogs are home in their crates and they're trained. So yeah, I don't, we don't recommend weaning off of the crate. We crate our dogs, our colleagues crate their dogs. Um, they're animals, they're animals. So we, we, just, we just have seen the fallout of not crating the dogs way too many times. Yeah. What is the best treats for puppies while training? <clears throat> I like to use the dog's daily food. That's the, just use their daily food. So instead of feeding them breakfast out of a bowl, do a training session with them. Instead of feeding them uh, dinner out of a bowl, do a training session with them. So we, we actually use the dog's daily food in training, to be honest with you. If I have to use a higher value treat, believe it or not, I'll, I'll just cut up some small pieces of hot dog. You know, I'm like, Against Even though she dog. hates yeah, hot dogs, hate she's hot dogs. against hot dogs for yeah. anybody, yeah. dog or person. Yeah, yeah, but I'll use I'll use small pieces of hot dogs. Um. Okay. So, uh, Becca Wood says hi, girls. Oh, hey, Becca. She, oh, hey, hi. hey, Becca. Yeah. Um, Becca is um um almost having canine. Oh, okay. Hi, Becca. Yeah. Hey, hey, and uh, Aunt Brenda says hi, Aunt Duck. Hey, mm -hmm. how are you? 
Okay, so Cynthia Wright, she says, how do I get my dog to stop chasing my cat? Okay, so C Cynthia has, she's on Facebook. Yep. Cynthia has a, a Laney puppy. Um, how do you get the dog to stop chasing the cat? You have to, um, so simply to stop chasing the cat, you have to put the dog in the, into avoidance over the cat. Um, because I, to me, I think about the poor cat, right? So you, you just, you do that with a, a shot collar. You just no and correct high when the dog goes to chase the cat, correct high on the, on the collar. And so sometimes folks are like, well, I wanted him to be buddies and friends. I'm like, well, clearly I don't think the cat wants to be buddies and friends with the, with the dog. So I'm thinking about the cat too. So that's just, that's just no and a correction on the, on the shot collar. And then teach your dog the place command, uh, Cynthia. Yeah. Teach him the place command because he needs to learn how to just lay down and relax and chill out in the house instead of like hunting the cat. This place command is very valuable. The other day we, I was trying to get a picture of it, but Roman was falling asleep and Roman is a Malinois and he was falling asleep on the place bed and he had not like been out running around for a long time or anything. So it the place command is basically how we teach the dog how to be calm on command. So the dog goes on place and goes, hey, what else am I going to do? Maybe I'll just take a nap. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. That's it's what Harvey's command. doing right now. Yeah, Harvey's <laughs> taking a nap. Yeah. And believe me, he's not. Yeah. So He's not tired. He's yeah. not tired. Okay, so you want to switch back over to here because we're good. Miriam yeah. Hodge. Hey, Miriam. Hello, we have Otis home now, a nine-week-old English Mastiff. Oh, Miriam. You know, Miriam, Miriam. is, um. Oh, that does say Miriam. I'm sorry. Mi that was kind of You said way. Miriam. I thought I said Marianne. Oh. <laughs> I don't okay. know. Anyway, she is the cook at Sandy Springs. Oh, okay. The, remember Amanda yes. came over and was like, yeah, hey, yeah, she's yeah. got her Mastiff. Okay. Oh, no, you weren't there. Anyway, yes. Okay, congratulations on your Mastiff. Okay, so she says um, he does soup. He, oh, yes, yeah. He does super on crate training and potty training, but wants to nip and bite when he plays. Mm -hmm. I've got a ton of things for him to chew, bully sticks, etc. but he goes for body parts. Yeah. He's used to being around 20 siblings. Yep. Of course, we know that. 20 siblings and a massive litter? That would be crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. That would be awesome and so fun. Just let them all. Yeah, it's so fun until you're puppies. cleaning up their messes. Yeah, that's that's not fun. 20 masses going, yeah. going potty four times a day? No. <laughs> that's why I'm... Wow. So I'm That's not why you're a dog not, breeder. You're not a dog breeder. You're not a dog breeder. Okay. Just a dog trainer. Uh, what is the best way to stop this now before he gets big as a house? And what age is best to start training with you? Miriam, I have a video on my YouTube channel on how to stop puppy nipping. Okay, so you take your thumb and you can put it underneath the dog's tongue and kind of like push down and, and, and towards the back of the throat. You can do that. For um, a correction, you can also fold the puppy's lips into his teeth, essentially making him bite himself. I have videos on both of those. If neither of those work, you can always bonk the dog. No, it's a calm no, and then bonk the dog over top of the head. But I'm like, listen, teeth on skin are never okay. Why do dogs, why do puppies bite? It was because that's how they play with their litter mates. So my, my mom has bred dogs since I was six years old, right? So for, for the, last, the last 25 years, uh, I've watched puppies play with each other and they bite and nip each other, okay? So that's how they play. So your puppy's just coming in going like, hey, this is like, this is how my people play, right? And he's biting and nipping you. Um, so you can, just, you can just bonk him or you can fold his lips uh, into his teeth or you can take your thumb and shove it underneath his tongue but again I have I have videos on on all that on Do you YouTube have videos on both things the lip curl and the mm -hmm. yeah really I think so hmm yeah, I think maybe we need to do another one so it comes back. Up. Yeah, we could. Well, we got a whole new litter of puppies. And then the next perfect. question is is when do you start training with us? Well, it depends what you need help with. Depends what you need help with. So if you're struggling with like potty training and whatnot, well, we can do a puppy one-on-one with you. And we can do that like next week. Um, if, if you want to do the foundation training, you can start when the dog's like eh, between 14 and 16 weeks old. And if you want to do e-collar training, we do that six months and after. So, so that's that. Uh, Nicholas Whitaker wants you to tell us how your brother inspired you. <laughs> I'm going to 
<laughs> He's over here. Yeah. Okay, Nicholas Whitaker didn't inspire <laughs> any, dog, any dog training. Dog training. <laughs> Guys, fun fact. My brother's not the dog guy at all. He always tells people, always, he's like, I know. Lace, Lacey got all the dog training genes. Like, Hey, guys, another fun fact. Whitney's brother is my brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my my brother married Danny's <sighs> sister. Boom. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick is not the dog guy. Yeah, and he'll tell you that. He'll be like, Whitney got all the dog training genes. It wasn't me. Yeah. So, you didn't inspire me at all that way. Sorry. <laughs> I like how Autumn laughed about that. <laughs> you, inspire, you inspire me to be a good person because you're such a great person, but that's, that's, that's it. That's good. Uh, Aunt Brenda wants to know, is there any breed of dog that is easier to train? No. No. It be, no. It come to me. It comes down to personality. I've seen some really super super dominant golden retrievers and golden doodles, and I've seen some really super laid back like pit bulls and Rottweilers and German shepherds. It just comes down to personality, kind of just like people, you know. But no, not really, not really. It is true. Yeah, you Nick, you are amazing. <laughs> so we do. We do talk about how awesome he is all the time. Seriously, we, though. I'm just kidding. Were we not just talking I'm about just what an awesome guy Nick, he is? We, yes, we, we were. We think you are. We think you're the best. You're the best. <laughs> What's that from? That's a musical. Is that, you Damn. wouldn't know. I don't Never mind. listen to know. musicals. But it's like, come on. You're the best. You're the best. Okay. Da -da -da. You're starting to embarrass me. Sorry, I know you hate when I start quoting musicals. And I hate when you start singing in public, and oh. we're in public right Why now. Why do you hate when I start singing in public? It's like a little embarrassing. Why? I know my voice isn't that good, but I don't like trying to hit the high notes or anything. Okay. It's kind of like, you know. Da, 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 da. Am I really embarrassing you? Okay. I'll stop. Uh. I'll stop. Um. Oh, it's Whitney has another question. Yeah. Well, um, you know what? She's getting one of Eve's puppies. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. Aww. Yep. That's exciting. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to, do you want me to read it to you? Yeah. No, <laughs> don't read it. Like, that's your entire purpose of sitting here is to read the question. Oh, that's my entire purpose of sitting here, is it? Isn't it? The entire... Oh. Isn't it? Okay, well, then I won't chime in at all. That's my entire purpose of being with you. Entired. In I can start reading the questions. You can answer. Okay. Okay. You want to start reading the questions yeah. and answering? Okay. So Whitney wants to know, when you guys have new puppies, do you guys start to train them on habits? No, you're going to you're gonna ask the questions and you're going to answer them. No. Because my entire purpose was to only be here to answer the questions. All right. Yes, we start working on puppy nipping. Uh, a lot of their actual training comes from their mom. So keeping the dog, the keeping the puppies with their mom for a full eight weeks is essential. The what they learn with their litter mates is incredible, and then we start working with them on confidence building and whatnot. But your dog is not going to come potty trained, Whitney. Let me. I just gotta like put that out there. <laughs> but we no. do. We we do the best we That's can. That's not a service building that <laughs> offers. We do the best we can to set them up for success for potty training. We do we do a lot to try to get the puppies to 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 do good with potty training. All right, next. Neil, I just want you to know that we talk about how you're a good guy too. Yeah, we do. We love you, Neil. Mm -hmm. So look, our, he's fishing for a compliment too. Why are you having them compliment you on a live? He, he okay. just wanted us to do yeah. that. Yeah, Neil, you're a great guy too. You were expecting a potty trained dog. Oh, okay. I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, Lauren Taylor. She's Lauren, over here. Sorry. Right, I know you asked your question a couple minutes ago. I'm sorry. Yeah. Lauren. Um, any tricks for the bonker to not be a towel toy for our 15 week old puppy? Yeah. Don't, um, don't, uh, be wimpy with it. <laughs> you know, um, here's the thing. We, so we rehab aggression. 
I have had aggressive pit bulls biting with the intent to harm hit the ground when I bonk them. Your 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 puppy is viewing it as a toy for two reasons. This is like when we always see owners struggle, it's because it's because um they're not firm enough on the bonker and they're not stealth. The bon the bonker is meant yeah. to be st I thought I have, have like, like seven of Grab me that bonker. <laughs> grab me that bonker. The bonker is meant to be stealth, okay? So, and you're, and you're always calm. So it's, it's simply just, no, don't wear your hat over here. Don't be awkward. It's simply, no. I my hat. Why would you tell me it's awkward? Okay. It's simply, no, right? And guys, mean. make sure your bonker is this size. It's a regular bath towel secured by elastics. Okay. That is important too. Yeah, it's not. Sometimes it's like uh, people. I think think we're like like okay. Not a dish towel. This is not it. No, this is just uh, everything we tell you is important because we see people. People come to us and are like, "Is this okay? Is this okay?" No, like we're telling you exactly how to make it. Yeah. It's a regular bath towel. A regular bath towel secured by elastics, and it is simply no and firm, stealth. And we have videos on the YouTube channel. But if your puppy is viewing it as a toy, it's because you're not being you're not being firm enough with it. And it's be, it's also we realize we are dog owners as well. We know that sometimes it's difficult. You <laughs> you put emotion into it, like we say a lot, like take the emotion out of it. So you're afraid you're going to hurt your dog. So you don't want to bonk them too hard. You can't hurt them with a cat and towel. We understand that, but you're not going to hurt your dog. We we wouldn't do that. If we thought that we would hurt our dogs, we wouldn't do it. We love our dogs. So we get so, it. I just wanted to say that. Okay. Next. Yep. Becca Wood. How many dogs do you train at a time? Um, we are, wor we are working right now, um, with about three dogs that we keep at a time. Um, we're looking to hire, uh, someone else. And so we're gonna, uh, we have someone else that works for us. So we're looking to hire a fourth person. We're gonna bump it up to between four to six dogs at a time. So Becca's a dog trainer, that's why she's asking. Okay. Um, so, so right now we have it at three dogs that we keep at a time, but we're gonna bump it up between four to six once we hire and train our new person. So, next. Christina Carver, any tips on easing tension between dogs that live together? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Dogs are pack animals, so we have to lead them. We have to lead them. We have to tell the dogs, I'm in control. How do you do that? We start training each dog individually on obedience commands, and you slowly start adding them together. We don't allow dogs to free roam in the house. So, um, and we are really big on permission-based dog training. Meaning when our dogs walk out the door, they look up into our eyes and say, may I walk out this door? Yes, you may. May I come out of my crate? Yes, you may. So everything is permission based. And so dogs don't get in scuffles with each other and whatnot because we don't allow it. So, so I, I would start, I would start getting a little bit more dialed in on your leadership with, with the dogs. Um, in terms of management. We're really big into management with the dogs. Next. Um, well, first of all, Aunt Brenda says that Nick's wife made him a pig guy, which is true. Yeah, so my <laughs> sister-in-law breeds uh, many pet pigs. So did Nick become a pig guy? You know, guys, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure Nick is an animal guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he is, but he's not. You know what I mean? Don't tell all his secrets out on. Nick is on the Instagram and the Facebook. Yeah. So Autumn is Autumn is an awesome uh, mini pet pig breeder. She, she does a fantastic job, and um, she knows her stuff. She really does, and uh, she researches everything. Yeah. So yeah, Autumn Acres mini pet pigs. If you guys like pet pigs, check her check her out. She's got cute stuff always up. On pigs and she listen she really knows her stuff about pigs but Nick I just don't know like Nick he likes animals but he doesn't want to take care of them next yeah okay uh Amber also says we're hilarious 
<laughs> Thanks. Do Thank you, you. Do you want to see you. my hat? You open it? Like, like what? Like with the hat? I love my hat. I know, but it's you're like, like so pretty. you're just like, hey, you think I'm hilarious? Well, let me put my hat on. I was just looking for a way to introduce my hat, not the fact that she might think it's hilarious. I hope she doesn't. I just like my hat. Like scale of one to ten, this is the second time you've embarrassed. Actually, third time you've embarrassed me within an hour and a half. You mean like when I started singing at Target and yeah. you didn't enjoy that? <laughs> yes. Guys, I don't know why she doesn't like me singing. I'm, I'm entertaining. Maybe not, but I try to be entertaining to her, and she so, just doesn't agree. That's something. Anyway. Okay. All right. Let's do this one. M. Gibbon. Who's that? Do you know who that is? I feel like we know that person. Mariah. Mariah Gibbon. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Why do puppies chew on the cage? I have a camera to watch my seven-month-old GSD male puppy while I'm at work, and every so often he'll chew nibble on the walls and roof. I know it can't be good for his teeth. Oh, my dog's did that. Yeah. Thing. Why do they do it? I don't know. Puppies are not heads. They're strange. They're knuckleheads. <laughs> so why? I don't know. Um, seven-month-old puppy. Correct them on the e-collar. I'm pretty sure you have an e-collar. I don't know. Um, we haven't met, but you've asked a lot of questions, so I think you have an e-collar. Um. Um, just, just, just correct them on the e-collar. People will say, well, you'll create a bad association with the crate. No, you won't. That's a lie. It doesn't happen. You won't. Um, um, you'll create a bad association with, uh, biting the, the bars of the crate. Yep. Um, but you won't create a bad association with the crate. So that, that's a, that's a correction on the e-collar and you can, and you can spy on the dog with either FaceTime or a, ba or a baby camera or something if he doesn't do it. So she says running. that she, that he does it while she's at work, so. Oh, well, the, that's tough. You might not be able to do it, correct him then, but you might be able to set him up. You know, we do encourage people to do that. Sometimes if there's a behavior that they don't want their dog doing, we encourage you to set the dog up with that behavior and then you can correct him for that. It's okay to do that. Oh, we, yeah, we, oh, yeah. We set the dogs up and board and train and everything. We set the dogs up, so. Yeah, so so you you may not, Mariah, you may not be crating him enough when you're just home. He needs to be acclimated to the crate. So you may just not be crating him enough when he's home. So just, just start crating him more and then, you know, put him in a room where there's where you're not and set him up with cameras. Any nonsense, correct them. Also, make them hold it down in the crate. Make them hold it down in the crate. All right. Don't let them get up and pace and stuff. That, yep. Okay. All right. Sorry. Perfect. All right, Mariah. I think we got that. My hat is very stylish. Did you see that? That my hat is very stylish. Thank you. You want to go get the other one in a different color? Well, it looks the same. It's just a different color. Because I'm spoiled and my mom bought it for me and it's fine. Okay, so Mariah says she hasn't tried that and thank you. You're welcome. I think that was a good. You're welcome, Mariah. Okay. All right, uh, we're going back over here. Thanks, Nick, for all the support. You're a great brother. <laughs> um, Brittany Irwin. You don't think he's a great brother? I do. I'm sorry. Well, he's going to text you later and he's going to be like, so you didn't think I was a great brother? Nick, I think you're a fabulous brother. I love you a lot. <laughs> all right go ahead next where'd it go there we go so nash is extremely afraid of the sweeper i okay. can put him on his cot on a place and mm -hmm. he does really well with his place as yep. soon as he sees the sweeper he takes off into the shower i'll correct oh. him and put him back on place as soon as they start the sweeper he's shaking and tries to be held accountable but then we'll take off and jump on the couch and okay anywhere near but yeah so you okay. get that um Oh, because um, of the wedding coming up. So she she's worried. Okay. She's nervous. Well, so Brittany's, Brittany's getting married, and she's going to have her uh, Mastiff in the wedding. I thought it was going to be Maid of Honor. Like, I don't understand. Like, I think she was just, like, like placating. Placating, is that the right word? Like, she was just like, yeah, you'll be Maid of Honor. So it's sure. not going to happen? I'm not going to be a Maid I, of Honor? I don't think and, so. Okay. Okay. So, Brittany. Um... Um, here's how we work dogs through fear issues. So we teach the dog. Okay, so the dog thinks, okay, sweeper comes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I was just okay. smiling. Okay, 
So it's dog. So the dog, the dog goes, sweeper comes out. I'm going to, I'm going to flip out. I'm going to run. I'm going to jump on the couch. I'm going to go on the, ta on the dining room table, whatever. So the dog thinks the sweepers is going to like suck him up or whatever. I don't know. All I know is we work dogs through that fear all the time. So, so you're doing good by putting him on place because when he, when he exits place, because he's afraid of the sweeper, you can correct him for non-compliance of place. People go, oh, so you're going to correct an anxious dog. Yeah, for breaking the command, I will. Because we as human beings go, there's no reason to be anxious. Right? So the dog is going to live in fear over that sweep for the rest of his life unless we tell him not to. So, so you're going to put him on place or in downstay. You bring the sweeper out. He breaks the command. It's no. It's a correction. And you bring him back. To either where he had his downstay or place. Um, so here's the thing. We know that you've been doing that because yeah. you said, you said you've been doing that. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we help owners through the messy middle part. Yeah. That's what we work through in board and trains. And that's what we try to, to help people through in private training. It's hard on owners. We put our emotions into it. Yeah. We understand it's really hard for you. It's hard for you to do that because you look at your dog and you think, oh, man, he's scared. My baby yeah. is scared and mm -hmm. I don't want him to be scared. Of course. We understand that. That's why we're here to tell you almost to give you permission. Like yeah. you said earlier, we give you permission and we say, it's okay that he's shaking. The more that you do this, he's going to understand my owner, my handler, whoever has value to me, and I know that she will protect me and I have to look to her. Yeah, yeah. So what you're basically telling the dog is, hey, I know you think this thing's gonna like suck you up, but it's not, it's not. And what happens is when the dog always runs away from it, they'll just always just like be in fear. When you make them face their fears, they go, oh, so this thing was never gonna like suck me up? And you're like, no, that thing was never going to suck you up. And the dog's like, Whew. well, I see that now. So you just have to hold him accountable for it. Just work it little by little. Okay. Oh boy. That's crossed. All right. There we okay. go. All right. <clears throat> Next. All right. Angie. Braiding? Braiding. Braiding. Yep. Okay. Um, love the training videos. Thanks for all your assistance. Maya is still doing great. Thanks to you all. Hey, Angie, we love helping y'all. She, Maya was the German Shepherd? GSD, we did an anxiety rehab. Oh, okay, I remember yep. that. She yep. was adorable. Yes. Yep. Hey, thanks for consuming. Thanks for trusting us with your dog. Next. Okay. Give Maya a hug for me. She's a great dog. So, Jessica, you, um, she actually asked a question here, and we have another question. All right. So, um, yeah, we're going to work on both of those here. Um, she says, this is Jessica Ruiz Miller. Ruiz Miller. Ruiz Miller. Yeah. Ruiz. I never say her name right. It's okay. Because okay. I'm, I'm going, I'm okay with this. Yeah. Her first question, did you go to school or do a certain program to become a dog trainer? How okay. do I get started on this path? Okay. Let me answer that first. Jessica, um, I shat, I, I worked with a dog trainer in our community and he retired from being a dog trainer and he highly encouraged me to become a dog trainer. So I'm thankful for that. I'm always thankful for that, but we always, we always continue learning. Um, if you're thinking about becoming a dog trainer, um, do a shadow program with a dog trainer. Ask a dog trainer if you could come work with them for free. You need to work a lot of dogs. Um, the, you don't, don't go to a dog training school, okay? Becoming a certified dog trainer and taking a test online, that doesn't mean jack crap. So you need to work a lot of dogs. If you wanna become a dog trainer, work a lot of dogs, do a shadow program with a great dog trainer. Or, I went with the best. What's that? I went with the best. Say that again so everybody can hear? Everybody. I think she's the best dog trainer. I don't know if everybody heard that. Okay, that was good. That was good. Do you, are you yeah, sure? My ego has been stroked enough. Okay. Okay. Find a good dog trainer that you can work with. Um, ask to work for free, actually, because you need you need to work a lot of dogs. Um, but yeah, there you go. She got more to her question? No, she 
that's it to that one. But okay. this one. All right. Um. So I have a nine month old golden since day one. He's loved to dig holes in our yard, but he will not do it if I'm out there with him. Okay. She has a fenced yard. Okay. So um, until recently, she's always been out there with him. So he wouldn't dig until he was old enough to use the e-collar. Our working number is about 12 to 15. And okay. the other day I watched him. Okay. Watch it. Just let me I know. Because you, you know I'm Just like, I'm I like know. This. You're ready I'm to ready go, go, but there's more valuable okay. information in okay. this. So All right. I, want, All right. I want you to... Okay. Yeah. Um, she watched him from the window and he started digging, so she got him at a 75. Okay. He yelped and took off, mm -hmm. but an hour later he started digging again. Mm -hmm. She felt bad thinking the level was too high, so she's wondering... <laughs> Just let me okay. get her entire question okay. out all so right. that she can feel like you heard everything. Okay. All right, all right. Because you need to hear it all. Yeah, so I'm she's here. wondering, will this take more than one correction on that high of a level? Should I make it higher? Because some people feel like the correction is too high already and they don't want to go higher. And they're nervous that the dog... I know the answer to this question. <laughs> okay. Sometimes people need us okay. to give them permission to okay. go higher. Where is she? She's here? Yeah, she's okay. there. Okay. Mariah. Here's the thing. Jessica. No, Jessica. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jessica. There's too many names going around here. Guys, listen. Listen. Bear You're with us. You're doing good. Bear with us. You're We've never done good. Instagram Live. Our Facebook lives are going to get better. Yeah. They're going to get better. We're going to learn how to do it. They're going to get better. Okay. Listen. If the correction worked at a 75, it would have worked. You wouldn't have to do it again. You, you catch on my drift, you wouldn't have to do it again. Bump them up to 100. Maybe hold it. One, two, three. Like, it, you, for something like that, you have to make it very uncomfortable to the dog so that they stop. Right? It's not fun to have to bathe your golden retriever every day because they're digging holes in your yard. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you're, what you did was great, but I'm giving you like permission to like bump your number up, bump it up higher because you already feel bad. But if it was that bad to dig holes in the yard at seven in and the dog got corrected at 75, he wouldn't have done it again. Bump him up higher. Maybe hold it one, two, three. Make it a little bit like more uncomfortable. It's okay. It's all right. How was that? Next? That was good. Okay. All right. That answered her question. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, um, Rachel Evans laughed at my hat. <laughs> my awesome hat. But she also asked a question. Okay. All right, Rachel. Let's have it. If I was... A I kind of laughed at it, too. I kind of laughed at it, too, when you walk in, like, on a random Wednesday morning. You know, like, this, like... Listen. You're just, like, you're just walking in. You're, listen, like, hey. You wanted to put my hat I'm, on this whole time, I'm didn't here. you? You wanted to put my hat on. Oh, yeah. You wanted yeah. to put it I on. I look like a real dork with it on. <laughs> I know you did. Listen, I put it on because it was, it was raining, and that hat is going to protect me from the rain. Come in. Hi. Yeah. We're, we're doing, we're doing a, a live. So if you could just... Yeah. It's okay. No big deal. It's okay. Okay. Um, you can have a seat anywhere. Go listen, ahead. Rachel Evans. Listen, okay. I wore my hat. It in. was raining out. It was raining I'm aware out. I was there. It was, it was very normal for a person to wear their hat when it's raining yes. out. Yes. Listen, okay? okay? It's you wear normal. your hat anytime you want to. Everybody you. loves it. It's a great hat. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Answer Rachel's question. You cannot say that. I love you. Hate <laughs> means love. Next, Rachel Evans. What did she have to say? If I was to send my dogs to you, is it best to send both of them at the same time or one at a time? I have two goldens. I bought the e-collar and prong collars, but I feel like I need trained. Okay, <laughs> Rachel. Um, That's a good question. Yeah, actually. it is. That's a great question. Um, we've done we've done lots of family dogs together like where they send the where one family sends two dogs at the same time so as far as we're concerned it's totally fine to send us both dogs it's not a problem at all in fact that will probably be best because then you just all start your new journey together so i'm proud of you for getting a prong collar i'm proud of you for getting an e-collar um keep watching all of our free stuff to help you in the meantime but you can absolutely send both dogs at the same time there's no issues with that at all next 
Um, Brittany just said, thank you so much. We'll keep working with it. And Jessica... You're welcome, Brittany. Just let me know when I need to get fitted for my bridesmaid's dress. <laughs> no. Just tell her no. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Next. Uh, Jessica just said, thank you, guys. I will try to set him up again from the window this weekend. Yeah. I do laugh because he does check to make sure I'm not out there before he starts digging. He is smart. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, you got to outsmart him for sure. Hey, Chase Canine Universal wants to know if you can have 100 bucks. Yeah, send me your PayPal. I'll get that sure, right we'll over, to over to you. No problem. <laughs> no problem, buddy. We'll make it 200 actually. Wow, you're so generous. I try to be. I know that's what you you said. I want people to know that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah, like, I want to be known as a generous person. So yeah, like, generous. Okay, we'll send loving. you over $200. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, we are at the end of our questions, everyone. All right. All right. All right, guys, we love helping you. Until next time, we'll see you.